Jenny Kane believes in the art of simplicity. They focus on comfort, quality, and timeless design so you can curate a wardrobe that never goes out of style. It's a capsule wardrobe. It's a quiet luxury capsule wardrobe, which is what you need. You know, they always, they have a stunning collection of home essentials, timeless furniture pieces, cozy throws. Oh, oh dude. Oh my God. The throws, you, you, you've got to see them. Plus they have incredible rewards program where you can earn up to 10% back with every purchase and joining is completely free. Find your forever pieces at JennyKane.com. Our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use code BCC at checkout. That's 15% off your first first order. J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E.com. Promo code BCC. Let getting dressed be one less thing to worry about. ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top-rated patient-reviewed doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for. Like I said a million times, I have used ZocDoc to find several doctors of mine. Actually, go to ZocDoc.com slash BCC and Download the ZocDoc app for free, then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That is zocdoc.com slash bcc, zocdoc.com slash bcc. Welcome to the chain. Welcome to the BCC Club. Happy Wednesday. We're your hosts. I'm Kendall Landreth. And I'm Sarah Shower. And each week we talk about the weirdest parts of the internet. Oh, God. There's going to be like a first time list. Oh, the weirdest parts of the internet. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, but we yes. are really cool. We don't do things like that. And what uh, are we talking about? The today we're talking about... Uh-huh. Um, today we are talking about legal advice on Reddit. Yeah. R slash legal advice. And it's not our legal advice. <laughs> Our slash, yeah, um, where people go on Reddit, the mm-hmm. specific Reddit thread, and they get legal advice. Yeah, and we're about to read this through some of the wackiest and crazy uh, yeah. legal problems people have. But before we get to that, how's your week? Um, it was good. I wanted to say this like funny thing. I went to a Fenty beauty event, mm-hmm. and um, I had fake acrylic nails on. I also the attire you're supposed to wear all black um, to the event, and I wore this like bright colored like set. And so I had to throw on a suit jacket, a million degrees, just so hot over this. Yeah. It's just like a. I tried to look like chic, just you know, a black yeah. large suit yeah, yeah. jacket, but. Um, I was like really disoriented because everyone was beautiful there. And I was like, holy crap. And I had to eat and I hadn't eaten. And I had acrylics on it. Well, like fake nails. And I went down to like the food table and I broke off four nails at once wow. onto the food table. And I had to like pick them up. And then I also, I had like the tiny mini sliders and I just like picked it up and I crushed one of them. Yeah. Just, I don't know why. And yeah. then like I just. and Were then you by I, yourself? Y- yes. Yeah. And then I, I dropped a second one. I just look like the most, like, I don't know why. Like, my brain was not working. Yeah, no, I've had moments like that. Yeah. I've had moments, that's hard. I get really nervous in situations like that. Like, mm-hmm. I won't go to events by myself. Yeah. I'm too, too scared. Or I'm just too awkward. Mm-hmm. And I won't have fun because I'm, yeah. like, by myself. Um, events like that. I love doing stuff by myself. Like, I go out yeah. to eat by myself. Oh, yeah. But going to, like, an event mm-hmm. is scary. Yeah. And, um... But when I went to a wedding recently and I went to get Tums <laughs> because they had like a basket next to the bathrooms where they had like Tums and Advil, whatever. I grabbed a handful of Tums because I was going to take some and bring some to my girlfriend. And someone started talking to me and I forgot that I was so anxious for them to know I was holding Tums for some reason that I yeah. just squeezed them really tight. And they talked to me for probably five minutes. And then when I opened my hand, the Tums had disintegrated and my hand was like the color of a of a rainbow yeah very embarrassing but i was so nervous oh no exactly so I feel like i do insane things when i'm nervous i was it made the a party like since i'm sober now i don't mind like going out to dinner by myself but like i was by myself there was a massive open bar and it was for the launch of like their mascara and i was like i couldn't drink everyone was like i mean like everyone was a model like and so then there was like random influencers there yeah. and they were like what are you doing i'm like Stand up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, then, and I'm like, what are you doing? And they're like, I just I just got back from Italy. Like, I was like, holy shit. Wow, yeah. And then I just, I'm cram, like, I'm breaking off my nails and just crushing a yeah. burger with my hand. Incredible. I'm like, thank God Rihanna didn't actually go. She didn't come? No. I'm sorry. If, I, that's I was good. like, <laughs> that's good. She didn't want to see, she didn't deserve to see that. Yeah, just the, yep. But yeah. um, what else has happened this week? 
my partner got back from Poland. Really? I think we already talked about Yeah, they're back um, and we're gay. And <laughs> what happened to you this week? What happened to me? Well, I've gotten back into Dynasty, the show, mm-hmm. the reboot. Yes. With Liz Gillies, who is my gay awakening. Liz Giles? Liz Gillies. Oh. Who played, uh, it was a Nickelodeon star. Yeah. When I was a child, who it was my gay awakening. I was like obsessed with her. And then now is the lead in Dynasty. Is that how you say her last name? Liz Gillies. I thought it was Giles. No. It might be two different people. No, I, we are talking about the same person I know. I have like read your mind just now and I see her face. Yeah. She's married to that creep. Yeah. What is with, you know what? I'm not going to get into that. But it, right. Yeah, it's I It's wild. Rest. But it's wild. That is a wild situation. Mm-hmm. I, um, but I mean, they're married, married. I have a bunch of French bulldogs together. But Liz Gillies, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I'm almost, I've heard her say it. Yeah. I think. But maybe I'm wrong. But I was like obsessed with her grant. Yeah. So naturally obsessed with Dynasty. And uh, I'm obsessed with it. But it was one of those shows where it's it's a CW show. You yeah. Know, there's not a lot of people are not really trying with the acting, which I think I love because it feels like they're just kind of yeah. messing around, which is a fun energy. No, yeah. It's like Hallmark, but the saturation is on 50. Yes. Yeah. And they like don't take it too seriously. Like they're, they'll do like a musical episode in the middle of like a murder. It's like mm-hmm. I just love that. But I started watching it. Because it's a little sad, but my dad and I used to watch it together mm. during the pandemic. And so I started watching again, and my girlfriend was kind of like, like, I would watch it, and then we'd get in bed to go to sleep, and I'd be like, can we keep watching it? And they were like, oh, can we watch something else? Like, I don't want to watch yeah. Dynasty. Because it's, like, stupid. It's a stupid show. Now they are obsessed with it. They are yeah. addicted. Within the course of a week, they're obsessed with it. It's all they, I mean, I guarantee they're watching it right now as yeah. we're recording this. I know they're watching it. Um, and so it's become difficult. I don't know if people have this with the show, with any show with their partner, where it's like, we're a, we watch it without each other, but then when the person comes home, we have to rewatch those episodes. Yeah. So now it's taken us so long to get through season three because I'll watch like ten episodes, and then we'll go back and rewatch those ten episodes, and then Jordan will watch two episodes without me, and then we have to go back and rewatch those two episodes. It's taking forever. Yeah, I think that's I and I, I'm so sorry, Naomi, if you're listening to this. I think that's one thing I really hate in a relationship. Is where like if you watch something ahead of someone yeah. and they're like, why would you do that? Yeah. It's like, dude, when I watch it with you, you're going to be asking me questions. Yeah. So if anything, I'm I'm preparing to watch it with you, yeah. you know? Yeah. And also like I'm so highly anxious when I watch like a drama or like a horror movie. I have to know how it ends like or else I can't enjoy it. I'm the same way with like any movie. Yeah. People, like I love a spoiler because uh-huh. I think because I have a hard time processing information and I have like some yeah processing issues. I have such a hard time comprehending any form of anything that if someone tells me the plot before I go see a movie, that makes me enjoy the movie 10 times oh, more yeah. because I'm yeah, like, yeah. oh, I already know what we're, we're dealing with here. Like, yeah. I know what's going to happen. Even down to like, I saw Oppenheimer the other night. Yeah. And like, that's a historical thing that happened. So I think even for me, that was like so much easier for me to follow because I was yeah. like, well, I know the ba- I know what's happening. Like, yeah. I don't need to like figure out what this world is like. I already know what's happening. I just have to like listen to what's happening per scene rather than like understand what the plot is about and what is, you know. No, definitely. I feel like I'm, yeah, like I feel like that's like an ADHD thing. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's too much information. I don't know what it's happening. So yeah. if I, yeah, I can follow along. It's like subtitles if you know the plot. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, 100%. Yeah, that's what I did this week. And I've been swimming, oh, yeah. still swimming. I uh, I don't love to talk about it because it's really incredible. It's what so is fun. your favorite um, style of swim? You know, I do mostly the this one, the freestyle. Freestyle, yeah. Freestyle. Because it's like I'm going to work out, you know. Yeah. Um, Wait, isn't that breaststroke? No, this is breaststroke. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I do a mix. Like, I feel like I'll do two there and back freestyle, then there and back breaststroke. Mm-hmm. Um, and then ever so often, like, when I'm finishing up, I'll do backstroke. Ew. Um, but I do mostly freestyle because I am trying to, like, uh, honestly, I'm trying to be there as little time as possible. Even yeah. though I've been enjoying it. More yeah. for just, like, my schedule. I'm like, I got to get home and get to work, whatever. Yeah. So I usually do it for 30 minutes. And it is, like, better. It's a little bit of a better exercise to do freestyle. So yeah. I'm kind of trying to crank it out, you know, and mm-hmm. leave. Um, if I was doing like an hour of swimming, I'd probably do more breaststroke because I think it's more relaxing. Yeah. Um, but what I really like is doing breaststroke, but kicking my feet. So I'm not doing oh, yeah. this. Okay. This is so, if you're listening, this is so unhelpful. But yeah. if you're doing kind of a frog motion, I like doing that with my arms, but kicking with my legs. Very Imagine fun. a really flamboyant gay man trying to gently get his way through a crowd, and yeah. that's yeah. the hand motion that Kendall just did. <laughs> You know, that's perfect. Or yeah. like, um, I don't know, like someone who does like tech crew for like a show is trying to gently move the move the curtains, curtains. aside. That's, that's what incredible. Kendall just did. 
Well, hey guys, support for today's episode comes from Jenny Kane. Perfect timing, honestly, because fall is on its way. Fall is after summer, guys. And some of us could definitely use a wardrobe refresh. Jenny Kane is a California brand through and through, and their staples make getting dressed easier than it's ever been before. Could you imagine purchasing a brand of clothing that made it harder to get dressed? I wouldn't ever. You know, Jenny Kane is minimalist and effortless, but totally refined. From luxurious cashmere sweaters and iconic accessories to elevated versions of your everyday basics, not to mention the most incredible home essentials too. Listen up guys, I just moved and I have some Jenny Kane home essentials on the way because I'm decorating my space. If you've been following my Instagram story, so super excited. Jenny Kane is here to help you live your best season yet. And for a limited time, our listeners get 15% off their first order. Go to JennyKane.com and use code BCC to get 15% off. I love Jenny Kane because I wear a lot of matching sets. I work from home, you've noticed. And so I really love the alpaca fisherman sweatpant and the cashmere fisherman hoodie. And my new neighbor complimented me on the, on the hoodie and, and she was gorgeous. Believe you, man. So I was like, if you're validating me, then this must be great. Jenny Kane is known for their super luxe yet lightweight sweaters. And trust us, they do cashmere better than anyone. The cashmere fishermen, like I just said, in the cashmere um, cocoon are best sellers in every season, but I'm always most excited to style them. I'm so, I, I'm, I'm so excited to style the cashmere fisherman hoodie because it looks like a lounging hoodie, but it also looks like you could wear it outside. Everything in their collection is designed so intentionally that you can style pieces together without a second thought. And that's what you really want, versatility. You know, I love to pair a Jenny Kane sweater and everything from classic, no, seriously, classic denim. I, I, you can just switch it up so much. Jenny Kane believes in the art of simplicity. They focus on comfort, quality, and timeless design so you can curate a wardrobe that never goes out of style. It's a capsule wardrobe. It's a quiet luxury capsule wardrobe, which is what you need, you know? They, always, they have a stunning collection of home essentials, timeless furniture pieces, cozy throws, Oh, oh, dude. Oh, my God. The throws, you, you, you've got to see them. Plus, they have an incredible rewards program where you can earn up to 10% back with every purchase, and joining is completely free. Find your forever pieces at JennyKane.com. Our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use code BCC at checkout. That's 15% off your first, first order, J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E.com, promo code BCC. Let getting dressed be one less thing to worry about. Well, hey guys, you know that feeling you get when you finally find the thing you've been searching for on the internet? You know, you spend hours researching and you've read thousands of reviews and then you find it, this thing, whatever it is. For me personally, it was a new table and bench set for my new place. It checked all my boxes, like the thing you're searching for checks all your boxes. And you know, it has five stars. Oh, and it arrives in just 48 hours. So why is it you can get the most random, wonderfully reviewed thing from around the world, global, international, in just two days. But if you want to see a good doctor, it can take forever to get an appointment. Not to mention, how do you know if they're even good? Thankfully, there is a way. It's called ZocDoc, a place to find and book great doctors who actually have amazing reviews, many with appointments available within 24 hours. ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top-rated patient-reviewed doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for. Like I said a million times, I have used ZocDoc to find several doctors of mine. Actually, my primary care physician I went to the other day because I thought, you hear my voice right now? You're like, oh, she has COVID. And I was like, surely I have COVID. And my PCP was like, no, you don't have COVID. You actually just have the common cold and you're a smoker. So it's the perfect storm of why your voice sounds like that. And I found them through ZocDoc. Could not recommend them enough. So go to ZocDoc.com slash BCC and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That is ZocDoc.com slash BCC. ZocDoc.com slash BCC. Um, I, you, I accidentally, <laughs> I accidentally hit someone in the face with my goggles at the YMCA. Yeah. And now I'm in, in a huge legal battle. Okay. 
I don't know if this is important to say for legal reasons, but that's not a real thing. But I'm just trying to make a segue. Well, I mean, no one can sue you off of like, uh, well, that sounds like me, you know. <laughs> I thought that I thought that happened. Yeah. Um, we're talking about legal advice on Reddit, r slash legal advice, which I kept reading wrong because I didn't know that meant. I didn't know that's how Reddit worked, where you'd put r slash. You are literally nuts deep in the eight passengers Reddit page. I know, and you don't know how the subreddits work? I know. Aren't you a moderator? That's the only one. I'm not a moderator. Well, we don't know. No, I'm not. (laughs) But I don't know how anything works. I'm only on that one. So to me, I probably just thought that specific one was called r slash eight passengers subreddit for no reason. Yeah. And I just thought they added an r. I didn't know they were all called r slash legal advice. And then on this, I thought it was just a typo. Well, um, we did an episode, um, Am I the Asshole, uh, with our friend Morgan from Two Hot Takes. And Kendall, who's a genius with a J, or DZ if you speak Polish, Ah! um, they were like, we should do something else, like similar to Am I the Asshole, because I love, everyone loves a good crowdsourced, you know, material of like, hey, can I sue my sister-in-law for stealing my car and driving it off a cliff? Yeah. You know, or, and so it's then what is going to, we're going to explain this to you. We're not going to explain how Reddit works. Um, <laughs> you're probably better off, but yeah, if you, if you know, then you already know. And if you don't know, we don't want to be the people to yeah. introduce it to you. Yeah. It's like watching two girls, one cup, do it on your own time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's a subreddit, which is like a, it's like a group of people on Reddit, you it's know, a forum. Yeah. Yeah. It's it has forum. like 2.4 million members created in October of 2009. It's an about page. Um, Described as a place to ask simple legal questions and to have legal concepts explained. Um, It includes a disclaimer that any comment is for informational purposes only and should not be considered final or official advice. Someone like thinks they don't have to go into court for something. They're like, I asked on Reddit and they said it was fine. They're like, yeah, so that you can't do that. You have to come here. Well, I think um, we're going to get into that. But yeah, the subreddit is uh, more tightly moderated. Um, so like in most subreddits, you um, have like moderators like who are like allow comments and that sort of thing. But uh, many comments are deleted for being off topic, abusive or offering illegal advice. So it's usually this it's more he- heavily regulated because it is like lawyers or law students. Like what is said has to be correct. Yeah. Or a bit impartial. Like you can't just have me go on there and be like, hey, dude, huh, you can sue your sister for stealing the car that she bought with her own money you know because i find that most things yeah i don't know i feel like anytime i i know nothing about this but i feel like anytime i'm like could i sue for that i'm not like thinking about suing i'm just interested yeah every time like i have a couple friends who are lawyers and they're like no you can't you can hardly sue for anything yeah but then you'll see these i saw a thing the other day it said woman gets eight hundred thousand dollars because her chicken nugget from mcdonald's was too hot yeah like how do i get into stuff like that yeah love to be involved she wants to reach out well i mean it's like um yeah, I mean, there's, I know, like, ba- I know the lay of the land when it comes to illegal or illegal. What I find always interesting to learn more about are those, like, random laws. Yeah. That, like, it's, or, like, nature-related laws. Yeah. Or, like, oh, what I think is interesting, you cannot booby-trap your own house. Like, even, like, if someone's, like, you know, keeps vandalizing your yard and you set a booby trap, you can't do that. It's illegal if they get hurt, even if they're damaging your property. Yeah. Because, like, you know, there's still... A reasonable expectation that other people who are not you will enter your property, yeah. like paramedics if you get hurt, or the UPS, like mail deliver any sort of Postmates person. So if you have a booby trap house, if even if someone is hurting your property, if they get hurt from that, you wow. will get in trouble. Which is messed up, but it does make sense. Like if a kid trying to get a ball totally. off you, yeah, yeah, that would be, that's a good that's a good law. There are some random ones. Like I yeah. saw a post the other day of this person being like. I was keeping, like, I had my Halloween pumpkins outside yeah. of my house, and it's, like, summer, and I just, like, haven't moved them yet. Yeah. And um, they found out, like, in Arizona, that's illegal. But I don't think it was in her backyard. Nothing happened. But I guess because, like, an- these this certain type of animal comes and eats the pumpkin, yeah. and it's, like, dangerous or whatever. But there's a bunch of laws like that. Yeah, my favorite type of law is where some jackass landlord moves in and cuts down a tree yeah. and then they don't realize that they've like that's if you cut down that tree like you're you could spend time in prison yeah it's because like it's just you know like it's a special type of tree and they're like it's my property i can cut it down yeah and i'm like no it's not no it's not go to jail but um 
More about the r slash legal advice and the moderators. The mod teams consist of 21 people, most of whom are lawyers themselves, they say. Um, it's about oh. 60 to 40 in favor of attorneys. Uh, Shane, a moderator, and an attorney in the state of Washington said in an interview, not all moderators are attorneys. Some of them are what I would characterize as subject matter experts. It's an open secret that Cypher underscore Blue, for example, is a police officer, and we have a couple of law enforcement moderators, and then one or two out of Child Protective Services is um the that realm sure mm-hmm. yeah that that's a lot of that makes sense i didn't know it was that like um i didn't know it was that like uh serious is the wrong word but like that that's pretty official well yeah because i mean it could quickly de- like spiral into some conspiracy theorists or like people who are it, like because law is not an opinion i mean it will actually if it's like generic enough wording you know then it is up for interpretation but also only a lawyer law student or someone familiar with the law would realize that oh i need to interpret this you know plain like generic language but um yeah i mean i i would assume that the moderators are not just random people because it's a lot of work i don't know why they would want to do that yeah (laughs) um wow that's incredible so there are some criticisms did you already read that i'm sorry um Wait, wait, let me just wrap this up. Sorry, I'm a little lost. I'm sorry. Um, So if you look at the... So why this exists is like... So even if you want to get counsel from a lawyer, like you have a situation or you don't know if it's illegal, that's going to cost you, like for a lawyer's time, you can post on this and get like free, like crowdsource from a lawyer. Like they won't tell you, you definitely will win or you won't. They'll tell you, do you have a leg to stand on? Does yeah. this sound like you have been ripped off or something like that? And they'll say that you should pursue it further. Yeah. Or like if you're going to pursue it, this is what you need to do. Um, it's just so like you can skip around that whole like a consultation. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Or put mm-hmm. a bunch of money into something that they're like, no, this doesn't, yeah, yeah, this doesn't matter. And so what are the criticisms of this? There's some criticisms. Some Redditors criticize uh, the r slash legal advice because anyone, i.e. non-lawyers, can comment on posts and some posts don't provide enough information for someone to give advice. You Wisdom wrote, I'm a lawyer and the biggest mistake I see people make is assuming the law is the same everywhere. This is a reason why we need to be licensed in every state to practice there. Furthermore, if it's not your specific area of expertise, a general knowledge of the law is probably not enough. The only, um, you slash Macha Hacha wrote, the only half decent advice I've ever seen come from that sub was what kind of lawyer you need to look for. It's safest to assume that everyone else is a cop or a moron. Mm hmm. Um, you, Moo Ki- you slash Moo Kids wrote, in my opinion, there are only three actual pieces of advice that from that sub. One, call the police. Two, get a lawyer. Three, you're fucked. I think those are just pessimists. But, I mean, it does... The first guy makes a good point because, obviously, laws differ across state lines. Yeah. And if you're like, hey, guys, is it legal that I recorded this phone conversation and and the other person doesn't know? In California, no. In Virginia, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. Like, so... And that will totally determine what you're going to have to do moving forward or what is considered, like, evidence. Yeah, because... I. Yeah, and I've, I'm always so surprised by that. Yeah, like the separation of like different states. Like even when I've watched like true cr- crime documentaries in the past. Yeah, where they're like trying to catch this guy, and then he crosses state lines, and the cops in that state like arrest him for something, and no one communicates. Like yeah. I was always, and I don't know if the, those are probably older cases. I don't know if it's still like that. Yeah, but I'm always amazed. Where I'm like, wow, there's really no communication. Everyone's just oh, kind of yeah. like. If you're if you're in Kansas now, what, what can we do? If, even if you've killed seventy people, what are we to do? No, exactly. Like, there's. I mean, this could quickly go into like a true crime discussion, and you know, like on our last episode, you were like, "There's the pros and cons." That is true. Like, um, yeah, cops never communicate with each other. They no. want to like it. This is my county. This is my problem. Oh, yeah, they crossed, and I can't drive over there. Yeah, or and, they don't even know. Like, I I was yeah. surprised that it would be like. In the database, yeah, well, I don't know, I have no idea how any of this works, but they it wasn't like John Doe, yeah, <laughs> accused of murdering seven people. There's not that that doesn't like come up on the computer when they arrest him and scan his ID. It like doesn't come up. Mm-hmm. I'm sure this is not updated, but there was like one documentary I remember where this happened, and I was yeah. like, that's crazy. I know it's wild. It's bizarre. This but- is actually a. Uh, I'm gonna say this because this is. It's so hard to get away with unaliving people yeah, no, these I days. Agree. But if you 
took that route with your life you know you ended other people's lives and you were like doing that in like the 40s 50s 30s oh my god and you got caught you're an idiot not even that 70s dude are you kidding me like the it's you actually like if you think about it it's so what are we worried about when we kill people today yeah you know i know fingerprints dna security cameras and uh, and so but back then it's wild i know i mean have you seen sweeney todd yeah, it's just like he was just murdering all his clients that he was barbering, and yeah. they, nobody's to know. How would you know? There's no way. There's no way to know. It's insane. And I always, I, I watched a lot of like older uh-huh. true crime stuff, and I'm always, it is so wild to me. Like I, I remember there was one. I think it might have been the Night Stalker. Oh, where yeah. you know he was in California, yeah. and he was like going house to house, very scary, just like constantly like every yeah. night a new person. It was very scary. The only reason, I think this is the same guy, the only reason they knew who it was is because he wore a shoe that only three people had bought in the United States. Mm. I'm like, why would you do that? Why would you not wear, like, a fucking Converse shoe to do, like, what are the odds? I'm like, so you're telling me the only reason you caught, and I think people, I think maybe people in the community actually ended up catching him, but I'm like, well, thank God he was only wearing, he was a a person who was wearing the most um, specific shoe yeah or we would have never known it's just wild to me but i'm like mistakes like that that was how you got caught back in the day now it's like you really can't get away with it which is good no yeah i mean it's <laughs> it's good but it's also like you know it's just like if i, I really want to shit on i mean richard ramirez was in the 80s yeah that was the night stalker yeah. right yeah 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 but i mean still even back then like they didn't have like dna it's all also like I, I don't follow a lot of true crime. The only thing I like is when they solve a cold case 50 years after the fact because yeah. they finally ran some DNA in which I was like, why don't why? Why isn't there just a division for like running all the DMV DNA that's like um, still able to be tested? Yeah, well, and because just, they just don't. I mean, I guess it's because <laughs> here I go. This is an idea. It, that, here's my idea. That's based on yeah. nothing. Yeah. I guess I'm like maybe they're probably like that would cost money, and that's. I mean, who cares now? Which I don't. I don't agree with. Yeah. But like, I think they're probably like, why would we invest in a case that no one is at? Like, if if sometimes the person who, like, the suspects are dead or the parents are dead, and there's no one really like fighting yeah. for this anymore. So I think they probably just don't want to do it. Whatever. But it's wild. But I do think there's something really positive about people having a forum where they can become educated on legal advice, even if it's just for a little bit of help. I think because so many people Mm -hmm. are very privileged to have family. Like, I know people whose parents know all this stuff about the law. I'm like, most people's parents do not know all this stuff about the law. Like, most people don't know what to do. Like, the first time I got in a fender bender, Mm -hmm. I immediately got out of my car and was like, that was my fault. I'm sorry. And it wasn't even my fault. I was just, like, panicking. Yeah. Even simple things like that. Like yeah. some people's parents really don't teach them because maybe they don't know. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't, if I had kids, I wouldn't know any, I wouldn't have any legal advice for them. Yeah. And so I think it is something that like, I mean, famously our justice st- system is super fucked up. So it, it, yeah. it's just another way in which like, you know, uh, lower income people or mm-hmm. lack of, like people with lack of education, whatever, are like put into bad situations or put into literal jail for life just because they like didn't know what the right sentence to say or like yeah. how to word things yeah so i think it's good to have a place like that no yeah i mean it's like also like like it's also you don't know sometimes you don't know if something's a crime yeah so like i mean this is also for people who are like it, so like i mean like it's truly like gray like i'm trying to think of like something that's like a great like taxes i think sometimes some parts of taxes yeah we're like there's people who do stuff that is not illegal but is not um, fully honest and then have to pay way less in taxes. And then there's some people who, like, do it by the books because they don't know what is illegal or legal and they have to pay way more in taxes. Yeah, that be a good example of a gray area? No, yeah. Or, like, um, someone just got married and they found out that their husband cheated a day after, like, annulments, what's possible or something Mm -hmm. like that. And you're like, is this... Is this great? Like, is this a crime? Like, can I still get my... So, yeah. But there are some notable r slash legal advice posts that... Let's um, hear them. We wanted uh, Mia to focus on these because we... we, Let's just hear them, you know? And I I asked them to be juicy. And if they're not, um, I'm going to link to the original post and I'm going to read it. I asked her to keep it a little bit briefer because we are both dyslexic. Um, That doesn't stop us from reading. But, I know. I saw a comment the other day said, Kendall's reading's getting better. I said, thank you so much. I've been trying really hard. You're doing great. 
So the first one is from eight years ago, and it's a post by someone. It says, Post-it notes left in apartment. On the 15th of April, I found a yellow post-it note in a handwriting that wasn't mine on my desk reminding me of some errands um, I had to do, but told literally nobody about. While odd, I chalked it up to something I did in my sleep, thinking maybe in my half-awake state I scrawled it so it didn't appear to be my handwriting. Um, I threw it out and thought little of it. On the 19th, I found another post-it note on the back of my desk chair in the same handwriting as the previous note, telling me to make sure I, quote, save my documents. I was freaked out, but there was no other signs of a break-in, so I set up a webcam in my house and aimed at my desk and used a security cam app for it to record after detecting movement. On the 28th, I woke up to find another post-it note, this one saying, our landlord, uh, quote, our landlord isn't letting me talk to you, but it's important we do, end quote. I immediately checked the webcams folder on my computer and found nothing from the night before, but my computer's recycling bin had been emptied, which I certainly do not did not do recently, indicating someone had noticed the webcam and deleted the files. They were and then they were Whoa. just saved straight to a folder on my desktop called webcam. Uh, today on the 1st of May, I found another post-it note, this time on the outside of my door with nothing written on it, and there also appeared to be post-its on many other doors in my apartment complex, all blank in varying colors. Do I have any legal recourse here? I have no proof except for the post-its, but those are written by pen, and my post-it notes so conceivably I could have faked them? Um, would contacting the police get me into any trouble wow. if they can't determine an outside source for this? I just want to make sure I'm not wasting anyone's time. Should I consult my landlord, um, those also living in the complex? And there was an edit. I pulled up a letter I received from my landlord back when I moved in, and the handwriting is identical. <laughs> Could this count as evidence? Whoa. I mean, I would go to my neighbors. If the post-its are in the front of all the doors, I would go immediately to my neighbors and be like, have you been getting post-it notes on all your yeah stuff. no exactly and also um that would creep me out i have oh that is creepy that like really gives me the chills honestly i literally i had a my senior year of college i had a landlord that would just show up unannounced and i he was like so old and he thought that like rules didn't apply to him and i was like i would literally sue you like thankfully i was like taking like 70 milligrams of adderall and not eating anything so i was rabid like a dog wow. when he saw me but i was like don't ever like come into our house ever again like you have to give 24 hours notice that's insane yeah because yeah. i i guess i assume what's happening is I mean, obviously, I just think her yeah. landlord's coming in with his key, but I'm like, why, what, what does he do? Like, just to be creepy? Yeah. I guess people like that exist, but like, there's no motive. What was the one that said it? It said something about don't tell the landlord. Um, My it, landlord won't let me say anything. It says, our landlord isn't letting me talk to you, but it's important we do. That's really weird. Yeah, but there also there was a note that says um, that made sure I, quote, saved my documents. Um, and I'm assuming that's talking about, like, on the computer. That's what I was thinking, too. Yeah. And so is there any update of what happened? Oh, no. I'm going to read the legal advice. Oh, great. All right. Um, okay. So someone, the top comment is, you seem sincere, and this doesn't appear to be the plot of a Ray Bradbury short story. So there is a lot of people who make stuff up. So this is the person addressing it as if it was real. Um, it's possible that your landlord is leaving notes inside your apartment, but they don't make any sense in the context you're describing them. It's likely that you are writing the notes yourself, but you are forgetting. Do you use post-it notice, uh, post-it notes as reminders in any other part of your job? Yes, this might be a mental health issue. You might be experiencing some sort of dissociative disorder, or it might be a physical problem. You mentioned that you have a very unusual narrow bedroom with no windows. Is there a chance that you're not getting enough ventilation when you sleep? Or that there is carbon monoxide leak in the building. A cheap CO detector, which you should have anyway, is a fast way to find out. You, um, you'll also have really bad headaches. Um, you know your own medical and mental history and your own experiences. And then edits years later and the good folks of WBUR, Boston Public Radio, have turned this thread into a podcast episode. Okay, yeah. But um, so it's not even so much like legal advice. I mean, it's, it's the person advising being like, hey... You might have some sort of mental health issue. Yeah. Well, yeah. because I think that is so hard on a thread like this on, uh, or on a forum like this. Yeah. Where you do not know who is typing. Yeah. And I think especially with legal stuff, it's like, you know, there's always th three sides to a story. And I feel like uh -huh. people, um, yeah, you never know what the person typing is uh, uh -huh. actually has going on. So that's very unfortunate if that is the case. Well, I actually, I don't know which is worse. I, I don't know if it's worse if maybe she, if it's her writing yeah. them and now she can go figure out her mental health or if it's her landlord breaking in. I think they're both pretty bad, but... No, exactly. I'm trying to see if there's, like, anything that they um, responded with that could... 
could respond with that that would indicate hmm, one second that's wild too if it was her then that would also be her going to all the other neighbors and doing that to them on their door Okay, the person said uh, to that comment, I have had really bad headaches, and I actually already do have a CO detector. I guess I should probably take that out of its box and plug it in. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> oh, no, my this, God. Oh, my God. This is literally what I want to make a YouTube video about. I love groups of people who solve crimes frequently that are they're not the purpose of what their job was. Like a lot of missing people found in national parks are found by big Bigfoot hunters. Oh, so yeah. like, and then it's they, they, that portion of people accidentally solve a lot of crimes. And like the same with people who look for ghosts, they uh, find a lot of carbon monoxide leaks. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry. I was trying to find a follow up to that and see if I could, um, update the person ha does has a carbon monoxide That's leak. So, or like, I guess probably people who are like, this is a little different, like house cleaners. Yeah. Or like I've I've seen a lot of like people who clean like hotels. Yeah. Find a lot of crime scenes and oh, or yeah. a lot of yeah, like yeah. come across a crime scene or like come across something that somewhere else that they're like, this is weird. Look at this. And I'm like, that's I feel like the same thing, like no, a similar yeah. job where it's like they solve so many crimes just because they like have to be in that area all the time. Exactly. I was um, speaking of like someone breaking in. I think I've told this story before. My brother was homeless while he was in med school mm -hmm. to save money. It was a choice. I know you told me that while he lived in his car and he just kind of folded down the back seat and put a mattress in and slept on it. Dang. It's like a, a like a tiny car. But like um, he lived with me for a little bit. And um, he moved out because he'd rather live in his car. And I came back one day, like a couple weeks later, and my apartment was spotless. And I was like, oh, my God. Wait, what do you mean? Like, like cleaned, my apartment or? when I left in the morning, trashed. Oh. And then I came back in the afternoon after work and I was like, this is spotless. And I was like, I don't have a boyfriend at the time. Or I don't I didn't have a boyfriend at the time. I was like, someone broke into my house and cleaned it and because th this was it's honestly creepier than if someone broke in your house and stole all your stuff i know I, like it wasn't even worth stealing they had to organize it first but like i this was a couple weeks after my brother moved out so i was like it's not jake and then jake called me a couple days later he's like did you like what i left for you and i was like oh my god i thought someone broke in and cleaned my house that is so funny very sweet yeah he was him. just trying to thank me for giving him a place to live briefly that's nice yeah. i was, if i would have immediately asked him though you didn't ask him no, like, no, because I didn't think, because he already left, and he's never helped me in any way. <laughs> so, okay, wait, this also, that's, that's, okay, if I hated my brother, yeah, would that, and I put, could I put that on r slash legal advice? Yes. My brother broke, broke in, into your house. But he has the key that I gave him, but he, well, st he still has know, it. Then. I don't know. I think there's, but I don't know, because I've seen some videos on the internet where there's, like, disputes where it's, like, someone is letting their friend, they like own their house, right? Yeah. And then they're letting their friend pay rent and stay there. Yeah. And their friend stops paying rent. Uh -huh. And then they're like, okay, then you don't live here anymore. And then cops can get involved and be like, yeah. you don't, you, if you don't pay rent, we can't, you don't live here and you don't have, you can't be on this property. But, but yeah. they still have a key probably. Yeah. So I don't know. It probably gets no, seriously. complicated. And squatters have a lot of rights. Okay. Here's the next one. Neighbors entrusted me with looking after their pet's house. Oh, Sorry. Neighbors entrusted me with looking after their pet slash house for three weeks. It has been almost a year now and they haven't come back. Today their basement flooded and I have no idea what to do. Oh my God. Wow. Okay. So in, jo <laughs> in June 2019, my neighbors came to my door. I had some experiences with them in parentheses. They invited me for a barbecue not long after they moved in. They asked me and my wife if we could look after their pets and their house for the next three weeks. They needed to return to Taiwan as his mother was dying. They even left me $500 for food for their two German shepherds and their cat. I don't know what happened to them, but they just never came back. I don't know if they ended up in some sort of prison or decided to not just come home at all. Today I found out their basement had flooded probably sometime within the last week. Apparently a pipe burst, but the entire basement is completely fucked. I paid to have the leak fixed, and I spent all of today using my shop vac to drain their basement to the best of my ability. Between this and one of their dogs needing surgery, I spent several thousand dollars of my own money, and frankly, the damage to the basement was pretty awful. I don't have their insurance paperwork, and I don't really know if I can even do a claim for them. On top of this, 
his two giant German shepherds, while they're amazingly good boys, it is becoming almost too much for us to handle. Their last name is extremely common and their Facebook profiles are private, which gives me very little, little avenue to tackle this down. Um, and then it lists all the timelines of it. Um, and the question they want to know is what exactly is my level of responsibility in this? I agreed to look after it for a few weeks slash couple of months at the most. It had almost been a, it has almost been a year now. Is there anything I can do? Um, okay. Here's the timeline. June, 2007. Nope. <laughs> June 7th, <laughs> yeah. 2019. Neighbors asked me if I would look after their pets and their house while they were handling the death of his mother back in Taiwan. Told me three weeks at the latest. July 1st, 2019. Neighbors sent me an email stating they needed some additional time to handle his father's affairs. He apologized and said he would be back by July 15th at the latest. July 21st, 2019. Sent him an email asking what was going on, explained how we were going on a vacation in August. Never got a response. July 31st, 2019. Tried calling him on his cell phone number he was given to me was no... Sorry. Tried calling him on his cell phone the number he was given... I'm sorry. Number he was given to me... Oh, I think I was written wrong. That's why I was confused. Yeah. Sorry. Tried calling him on his cell phone. The number he gave me was no longer in service. August 14th, 2019. Went on vacation. Had my brother look after all four dogs for the next week. September 2nd. Emailed him again. No response. September 3rd. Tried to reach out. Um, tried to reach him and his wife via Facebook using the private message feature. September 6th. Ended up moving his two dogs, one cat, into our house as they seemed extremely miserable. I ended up missing. I ended up disassembling part of our adjoined fence to allow his dogs to use their outdoor area. November 19th, 2019, one of his dogs started showing signs of being ill, brought him to the vet. Turns out he was suffering from a medium severity case of IVDD. He ended up requiring surgery, which we paid for. January 21st, 2020, sent another email and never got a response. Today, when I was bringing his mail into his house, I noticed it smelled pretty awful and quickly discovered his basement had about a foot of water in it oh my god i um they so they said the long uh, the location was ontario canada and they did add some other points it says i'm assuming they had some sort of auto payment for bills set up because they still have hydro cable internet and then i'm unsure where exactly the husband worked i know he said he was an engineer however i cannot find his linkedin profile so i don't know what company and like kendall said their last name is very common and there's like a lot of facebook uh, results. I think the I'm not a lawyer, but I am someone who just they're dead. Like that's they're uh, missing people. Like because it, it's not only did the when he was able to contact them, he said initially the death of his mother, and then he had to handle his father's affairs. Yeah. Yeah. So like there's something happened with the entire family. Well, I guess probably just that if the mom died, the dad has to like they probably just get the dad set up in some type yeah. of way financially maybe. You know what I mean? Yeah. I so maybe that was it, I, I think if they wanted to... I think they knew something hard was going to happen when happen when they entered Taiwan, but they probably still love their dogs, and the fact that they had auto payment on for all their bills... Yeah. Yeah, I think they're dead. And but Ugh, Yeah, I'm, I feel like it's bizarre that she didn't do anything. Like, she sooner. so quickly accepted all of this. Like, yeah. I feel like I would have immediately been like... I need to, like, figure out what's happening. I wouldn't just keep being like, ugh, I gotta email him again. Like, follow, like she, I feel like yeah. she's kind of acting as though she's following up for, like, a job interview. Yeah. I'm like, no, these are people who might be literally missing. Um, and if they're not missing, are, like, you don't need to be a com... If they're not missing and they're just, I don't know, on some sort of heist, I don't know what's yeah. happening, then, like, that's on them and you need to, like also contact someone to help you figure but like not a year later that feels so wild to also, me this was a man this is a man who posted this oh but i mean wild, I, yeah. but yeah i think he's Same just an idiot though. yeah that's yeah. bizarre to me especially it's like you're going in collecting his mail still she's like still how sorry he yeah i don't know why I, th I think i read it thinking yeah. it was a woman for some reason now i can't get that out of my head um Going in and getting his mail. Yeah. It's like he's still house sitting. I'm like, what are you? You've accepted all of this. So clean the basement. Didn't tell anyone who came to fix the basement. Like, hey, this isn't my house. I, yeah. I don't know. How. Bizarre. Tr didn't see if there was family. Couldn't you have taken it to the, the I would have gone to the vet if no one was going to help me. I would have been like, uh, I'll go to the vet. Yeah. Get information. 
I'll go, like, there's so many avenues today. Also, you're in their house. You could collect so many documents in their house. Yeah, it says, what exactly is my level of responsibility in this? I agreed to look after for a couple weeks. Um, and so the main advice actually is just report the people missing. And I would say um, you don't have to take care of anyone. You didn't have to pump the fucking basement. And also, if they did not return after three weeks, take the animals to a shelter or, or something be, or, or adopt them. Yeah. Like, because, I mean, it is you don't automatically adopt. Like, I mean, I saw actually something, another like legal advice thing that was similar, but with someone's kids, the lady just didn't show up for a couple of days. And she's like, well, I mean, I, I promised to babysit. Yeah, you promised to babysit this a certain amount of time. I had that happen to me one time. Call the cops or CPS mm -hmm. after that. And like, if you don't want to go CPS, call the cops and then the parents should come home. Unless, I mean, or the I would call the hospital, see if something happened. Right. Call the jails, see if something happened. And if there's no update on the person you're looking for, then you call the cops. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Wait, what happened with you? No, I mean, I just, when I was 15, I was babysitting this woman and she like didn't come back for like a day and a half. And I think about it all the time because I was 15. Like I was just, fi yeah. I was 15. I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah. Like I was just kind of like, oh, okay. Like, and it's one of those things I look back. I'm like, Jesus Christ, why did I not? Like I was supposed to babysit until like 6 p.m. I was there all night. Yeah. She came back at like 7 a.m. and didn't pay me. She was like, I don't have any money. So I felt, I think at 15, I was like, I feel bad that yeah. you don't have any money. So I'm just going to not say anything. Was she one of my people? What does that mean? An alcoholic? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. I knew nothing about her. Yeah. I was like trying to save money to go to, like, I was just trying to save money. So I like posted on Facebook being like, yeah. who wants me to watch their kids? And I got some nice people responding, but obviously some people that were yeah. not as nice. And, um... She had me. I went back. If you can, well, the first yeah. time I babysat, it was like weird. Like it was a, it was hard. Yeah, it was like a hard. Th and she was late, but it was like by an hour and a half. But didn't communicate with me. Yeah. Once again, fifteen. So my standards for how people communicate with me are very low. I don't understand yeah. that. Like you, that's no. Like you shouldn't do that. Like I'm just still learning. I'm very young. So I was like, oh, okay. And then I babysat her, but she didn't pay me because she's like, oh. well, she paid me twenty dollars. Yeah, which was far. I was watching her kids yeah. for like eight hours, God. but she was like, that's all I have. And I felt bad. So mm -hmm. then I went back. Once again, I would never do this now. But I, I mean, this was like a friend, of course. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not like, I won't help you if you don't pay me. But it, this woman is like a random woman. Yeah. I went back. And then it was when it was like overnight. And then she didn't have any money, but said she was going to pay me. And I was kind of like, at that point, I was like, I'm not coming back. But whatever. I didn't say anything. And then she called me and basically accused me of like, like hurting her children. Oh. Because she didn't have, which I, there's, I mean, I didn't do, obviously. Yeah. Um, but she, I think, just didn't have money like, yeah. to pay me and wanted to, like, make it to where I, she didn't have to. But I was like, listen, I, you don't, I'm, you're clearly, you're not going to, you don't have money to pay me. So clearly you're not going to pay me. But, like, you don't have to don't, threaten me. Don't <laughs> threaten me with, like, this weird, like, she, I don't know. It's, like, always so, that was one thing I struggled with babysitting. Yeah. Where sometimes. The parents threatening you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I, that was the only woman I ever babysat for yeah. who was weird. And I understand checking on your kids. I'm not saying you shouldn't check on your kids, like especially yeah. if you're leaving them with a stranger. Although, I don't know. I'm a 15-year-old you found on yeah. Facebook and didn't do any background on me. Yeah. So that's kind of crazy in itself. But like, I, I understand if your kid is like hurt when I you pick them up. You're yeah. like, that's weird. And checking on them. But I felt like this always happened where people would have me babysit their like, three boys who are the same age. Yeah. And the whole time they're there, the boys are like beating each other up. And yeah. I'm of course trying to like be like, stop, like don't do that. Yeah. And even the parents are like, they're, you know, boys, little people. Like they're just so like that type of parent. Yeah. And the kids are just, why they're like jumping off the couch and like throwing cars at their head. And then multiple times this happened where I get a, a photo from the mom yeah. of like a small bruise on this child's leg being like, just wanted to check in with what happened. I'm like, well, I don't know. Your children are feral. Yeah. What do you think? I hurt that? I, I would never do that. But like, you see how your kids act. Yeah. You think you're confused at why they have a little bruise on their leg? Yeah. They're like fully feral animals no, just exactly. running around. Get like a pet camera and you'll see that they're beating each other up. Yeah, it was like, he threw a cup at my head. Yeah. I have bruises. You want me to send photos of my bruises from babysitting your children? Exactly. I do want to add, I just read um, this. Someone else said, if they're dual citizens, I wonder if, if it might be worth contacting citizen services at mm. the American Institute in Taiwan. It's equivalent of an embassy, but um, they don't have full diplomatic relations. And then edit, of course, I neglected to check OP's location. In this case, the correct folks to reach out to would be the counselor or citizen services division at the Canadian Trade Office. Um, but yeah, 
So then just report them missing. And I don't think you're uh, you're not just because you said you would take care of someone's house and animals for three weeks after that. If you contacted like the city and been like, hey, dude, this is the situation. And I don't know. There's a flood. Yeah. You know, and then also I would have contacted some humane society. Oh, humane society. (laughs) (laughs) Humane society. Yeah. Like that takes care of animals. Yeah. I mean, it's a hard situation, but I think it's like. I just find it bizarre he didn't... No, that's what most of the thread yeah. is, like, focusing on. Like, the fact that he waited, like, a year to be like, oh, four or six months, I've this dude might be missing. These people might be missing. A woman would have been on it as soon as the three-week mark hit. Yeah. Three weeks in a day, and I'm taking care of your dogs. I'm, I'm like, I'm reporting yeah. you missing. Well, because I'm like, what happened? Yeah. Like, either you're an asshole yeah. and not considerate of me or communicative, or something happened. Yeah. Maybe I'd wait a couple days to, like, really get someone involved. Yeah. If I was like, well, maybe they lost their phone or maybe they've had a crazy... I don't know. I still would be like, that's insane. But mm. past that, I'd be like, well, something clearly really bad has happened. Yeah. Especially when you're dealing with, like, going into other countries. I feel like sometimes there can be, like, we were, like, we couldn't... Like, I have, ha- I have friends who it's like they can't leave the country for some reason because they yeah. got... You know what I mean? Like, there's things like that that yeah. could be happening where you're like, I need to know what's going on to help them at least... No, exactly. The part where it says the phone number he gave me was no longer in service. I think these like in the fact that they left their dogs, if they're super rich, that's the only time I could see someone casually abandoning their property. But like, yes. I think yeah. something really bad happened. And the fact actually July 31st, when it told me their phone is no longer in service would would have been the day that I reported. This is. Oh, yeah. And this one says and I this is what I yeah. think. You have total access to their house. Have you looked around for any documents that ni- might be checked to a stuff? That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I'm no. like, you're in there. Are you OK? No, I just hurt my wrist. I'm I'm sorry. It's fine. I'm like, you're in. This is what I was thinking. I'm like, you're in their house. There are birth certificates. There are even down to just like. There's probably like an I'm not exact things, but like a number for their pediatrician on the fridge or random things where it's like there's no way you have access to their full house and no way. Photos of them. This yes. is 2019. You can reverse image search. Yes, their computers. They are all they're everything. You can call their phone company and get an entire like I mean, I don't know the laws. Maybe there's things that you can't, but there's someone you full can call. Legal name. Yes, their Who full are you legal name. This too? Their number, their credit card information. You can call the credit. And then, but this is all information I guess I would give to the police. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but it's like you have so much information and you just started, you just kept taking care of the house for a year. Wh- what? Yeah. Like when you buy, if you report it to the cops, when you buy a house, you have to list your social security. Yes. And they will, I mean, if they... Emergency contacts? If they encountered, well, not, they're in Canada. Like, if they, I mean, there's other information that the embassy in Taiwan or in, in Canada, Canada could have helped you. I actually, this is a man. You better be 75, because this, this post yeah. is annoying. I mean, the fact that you used a sump pump shows me that you're <laughs> probably not 75, and you're just an idiot man. Or <laughs> killed them? I don't know. It feels insane to me. Yeah. Like, this feels wild, where I'm just like... Something is not right here. This. Why are you what? Mm. You're in their house. He said he's he said he was going to put their mail. Their mail. You yeah. have their mail. Open it. Yeah. I don't know. You're just bringing it in. Who are you bringing it in for? Yeah. They haven't been here in a year. They're not coming back. Taking care of the dogs, getting a surgery. I'm like, did you ask, you didn't tell anyone at the vet what's going on? You were yeah. like, hey, by the way, where is this dog's parents? That is true, because when Naomi was in Poland last year, their cat got really sick, and I don't know how it works in, with Canadian vets, but like, I, they were like, if something happens, is this your pet? I'm like, no, this is my partner's pet, but they are not in the country. Yeah. Oh my God, Canadians chime in and de- berate this man. The next one I'm going to rate is Subaru Service Center <laughs> gave my car to someone else. And I, I'm excited about this because I feel like it's about a lesbian because it's a Subaru. Yeah. All right. So Subaru si- uh, Service Center gave my car to someone else. Final update. So I dropped my Subaru WRX off to be serviced at a third-party service center. They called me to tell me my car was ready to, for pickup. When I arrived today, I waited for about two hours while they were getting my car ready for pickup to finally be told that they accidentally gave it to another customer. They offered a rental car for the meantime until they can get it back, which they said would hopefully be in the next few days. Should I take any action against them? Slash, is there any action I can take against them? Edit. I need to clarify a mistake I made earlier when posting this. They are not an official Subaru service center as I previously thought. They are just a third party service center I have to and do not want any hate going towards Subaru. They did nothing. Um, (laughs) This was not their fault and I love their cars. Oh my God, shut up. And then edit. 
Thank you all for your advice. I'm not good with legal stuff, but I'm going to read that after I see what the legal advice is. Sorry, can I? I just have a question. Yeah. What they dropped it off at a third party service center. What does that mean? Like a to, to get, get it like fixed? oil change? Oh, good. Yeah. That's what I thought. I was making sure. Yeah, and then they gave the car to someone else. That's incredible. That is, I would sue them. Yeah, because it feels like there's what they didn't check any yeah. ID or. Although honestly. One time I went and picked up my car yeah. and I was from a, I picked up my girlfriend's car. Yeah. Actually, it wasn't even my car. Picked up my girlfriend's car because it had a malfunction in the trunk. Like the, th- mm-hmm. the latch in the trunk didn't work. I go to pick it up and I remember leaving being like, well, that would be easy to steal a car. Yeah. Literally, I walked in and said for Jordan, which is not me. That's yeah. my girlfriend. And a man who looked, well, a man is, I mean, he looked 12. He was like a young teenage boy who was, I guess, is probably looked like his parents owned the car shop or something. Was like, oh, Jordan, okay. And then looked at a bunch of keys, which had all the names on it. So yeah. if I wanted to just look, I could have been like, oh, Emily has her car here. I said, Jordan, you just handed me the keys. No, yeah, now that I think about it, also, like, the majority of, like, mechanic, like, shops are open. Yeah. You can walk by the side, be like, I have the white Suzuki Forenza. Like, just a seat of yeah. white Suzuki Forenza, be like, I'm here to pick up the white Suzuki Forenza. They never, it's the same when I get my car washed. So, I like, every, like, six months I go get my car fully detailed. Yeah. And every time I go in, there's a car parked, my car is parked out in front of the store. Yeah. And I walk in and I point because the woman the woman who works there doesn't really yeah. speak great English and I, I like I'm like my car and she goes great hands me the keys and I'm out of there yeah and there's so many I'm like that is wild though so I actually understand how that um would happen I feel like the place I get like my car fixed at would easily this could have happened at oh yeah I love the place I get my car fixed I at. do there's so well this like this lady she's like I love the pl- I do too no, but I'm like wh- every time I'm like my car anyone and it's like a random person yeah. like, who are you okay great blue Prius they take it I don't know no exactly wait but where I get my car done um since my old car broke down a lot um they're all French and literally I drew I didn't drive my I got my car towed there middle of the day and they like were sitting around this massive like circle table that you see in like an old person's living room yeah and they had like an assortment of cheese and wine and like it was like and I was like are you guys busy and they're like we're eating and I was like should I come back and they're like come back this afternoon and I was like when and they're like this afternoon I and then that. I was uh, they there was n- <coughs> no rush for these people but I love them and they were French and they fixed my car but um Someone said, I would definitely want my own insurance company to see and write an estimate of damages on the car. My concern is that if the Subaru dealer has an in-house body shop or, okay, someone said uh, Subaru dealership. Okay, regarding your edit, call your insurance company right now. They have attorneys to deal with this, so you can probably you probably will not have to hire your own attorney, depending on your policy. Your insurance might be able to get you a rental and front the cost of getting the car repaired or replaced. You shouldn't be liable to pay for anything, and your insurance will battle it out with their insurance. Also, when the police arrive, I would see if they're willing to arrest the manager for driving your car without permission. He stole your car from my perspective, but the police might not see it that way. Wait, the manager of the car place? Hmm. Wait, 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 wait. Let me see if there's an update. Uh, thank you for your advice. I'm not good. Uh, I called the cops. Employees got mad and stressed out immediately. It turns out one of the managers took it for a joyride and wrecked it, which they admitted to while I called Whoa. the cops. I still have not seen it, but I also told the damage was I was told the damage was extensive and that I would be held liable for payment to fix part of it. At this point, I'm going to get a lawyer involved, right? I shouldn't have to pay for anything they have messed up. Even if they offer to cover fixing it, I'm a little uneasy about that. Now that it has been in a collision, it has much less value and could be prone to future problems um they said if i didn't get lawyers involved they would cut me a deal but i'm not really having that uh not to mention they have been lying to me for hours final update hey guys i just want to thank everyone once again for all the support i did not expect this post whatever shut up little backstory when i first bought this car in november the dealership hit a wall while bringing it to me and damaged the bumper that is what I was getting fixed. That being said, in the end, I was getting a, I will be getting a new 2019 WRX. I'm pressing charges against the SM for theft. I have filed official complaints with the Motor Vehicles Dealer Board and the Office of the Attorney General Consumer Protection Section. Um, and I will be suing for an undisclosed but reasonably high amount. Luckily, my lawyer was pro bono and my insurance covered the cost of the total car. All in all, I'm walking away from this with more money and a nicer car than I started with. And that's all thanks to you guys. Without this thread, I would be not wow. rambling. They are in Washington, D.C. Dude, if I... Oh, my... I'd be so mad. I'd be so mad. I would... Even the just the saying that out loud where they were like, if you don't get lawyers involved, we'll cut you a deal. I'm yeah. like, cut you a deal? Yeah. 
cut you a deal? Yeah. What's the deal? What do you mean cut you a deal? Like a 20% off your next uh, yeah. trip here? It's like, if you're going to do anything where, if you don't want lawyers to be involved, you got to go all out. Yeah. You got to be like, it's all free. We'll buy you a new car. Because I'm like, ultimately, it's going to be cheaper than what ends up happening to you. Yeah. Like, what? Like and if you're smart, you know how bad what you did was. Yeah. That's wild. And uh, also, what? Took it out? What type of car was it? I guess we don't know. Well, I mean, if they took it for a joyride, it's probably a nice car. That's what I'm thinking, but it said Subaru, so I just. The, uh, re- I'm taking. Well, <laughs> I'm going to test drive that Subaru up back. But Right? That's what it is. It's a Subaru, isn't well, it? Well, they, they took it over some, like, hills, and, you know, like, they Insane. tested the four wheel drive. I'm, I'm trying to think. They went of- to Yosemite with it. Oh, gosh. I, um, I'm trying to think of, like, where I've wanted to sue. Co- well, the thing is, is the. Some some of the like mechanics that I go to now, obviously, since I look like this, they rip me off like most mm-hmm. of the time. So I already don't like a lot of mechanics, but I do like my French mechanics. You know what bugs me? Uh, this is not like r slash legal. This is like petty crime, mm-hmm. where like um, my Postmates for the past like couple times has not been delivering to my house. Like they will take a picture of the food that's been delivered, and it's at a house, yeah. but it is not my house. Weird. But the thing, and I'm like. There, so I try to get a refund, and they're like, sorry, it shows it was delivered. And so I literally, in the help desk, have to submit a photo of my house and be like, is this the same front yard you're seeing? Yeah. Like, is this the same? And they're like, sorry, there's nothing we could do. I'm like, I just refund me the entire thing. They give me a discount. Yeah. Because they say, like, the order was completed. Yeah. But I'm like, the order was not completed. This, yeah. The, no, I, got, I mean, yeah. it's weird. I had a DoorDash driver the other day. He was so nice, and he did deliver my food. Very, very nice. But I went later and looked at the photo, because it like when I went to go leave a tip, and it was like, uh, it was a photo of the food in his car. I was like, well, (laughs) that doesn't really help anybody. What is it? Because I used to be a DoorDash driver, and um, I always took the photos so seriously, because I was like so worried about, because people do, I think it's a hard thing, because I think so many people do lie. You'll deliver food, you take a photo in front of your ho- their house with the food sitting there, and they still will be like, well, they took it after. Yeah. They took my food, and now I want a refund. And it, so I think it, they do have to be careful about it, because it fucks with the drivers more than yeah. anyone. But it's like, what? Take a, take the photo in front of my house. Yeah. What, that's crazy. What? Why is it in your car? That yeah. doesn't help anybody. But I used to think I would get in really big. I would be yeah. in really seriously because I was like, I'm not letting it. I would have the address number in it. Yeah. Because sometimes people just take a photo of your food too and it's just like you see concrete around it. I'm like, I don't care. But I'm like, it'd be really easy to yeah. be like, I'm not going to do this. But it would be really easy to be like, that's <laughs> just on the ground. That's not helpful. I was always like, the numbers in it. Yeah. The address, the like the carpet in front of their house. Like, yeah. All of it's in there. No, dude. I am. Um... I, I'm so fortunate to be able to, like, use, like, delivery drivers. But, like, you know this the thing that we were talking about, something additionally, is, like, uh, I hate when I get a male delivery person for Instacart. Mm. Oh, yeah, and they you're trying to get them to pick up, like, powder and yeah. foundation, and it, they're like, I got you ketchup. Dude, I this is a so minor. This is just, like, a stupid problem. But, like, I, I needed, like, a hair mask <laughs> for my extensions. They're extensions, guys. But, like, I requested this certain type of hair mask and then the guy was like it's not available and i was like could you send me alternatives um to and i'm assuming he'll take a picture of the display the brand that i wanted he takes a picture of every other hair mask and i'm like no 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 sir thank you but can you take a picture of the display of moroccan oil you know yeah he takes a picture of the display of moroccan oil the hair mask is in the photo and i'm like hey sir it is right there yeah and then no response your driver is checked out I'm like, are you, f- this is like, this is why, I mean, I'm gay. Like, this is absolutely why I'm gay. Yeah. Because every time this happens, I have the most vivid vision of his ex-girlfriends. Yeah. It's the weaponized incompetence. Yeah, the women that he has driven to madness, mm-hmm. I, I see them so clearly. Like, it's like, I like that's so Raven, literally. Like, if he could do this to me, a random person who's paying him, imagine yeah. what he's done to his I girlfriends. Know. I know, it's terrible. And so, I mean, like, it's just a shame. And I wish I could, I don't want to, no, I'm not going to sue. Oh, I've also had a um, um, an Instacart, not Instacart, Postmates driver. He was dressed in full um, nurse's PPRE, or like he was wearing like full like scrubs or okay, whatever. Yeah. He had gloves on, he had a headband, and he had a mask. And he was like, I'm so sorry. Like, I just got out of like the hospital. Like, I've been doing, like, I've, I'm a nurse. And I was like, hold up. Because, I mean, I understand wearing scrubs, like maybe. Yeah. But he was wearing like the full like... Um, jackets that sort of thing and i was like that is 
wholly unsanitary. It looks like he's th- covered in blood. He's like, <laughs> like sorry, I, po- I post- <laughs> had to do surgery. <laughs> no, exactly. I posted that, and every nurse that follows me or doctor that follows me was like, you would not wear that shit out of the hospital. The scrubs, but like, I, I'm just like literally gloves, the wrap, and then the headband, and then the the goggles. Like the well, like the. Do you think this is real? Like, no, do you think I he think really he was. was a, I think he was trying to like get, get pity. Like yeah, I'm not paid yeah. enough, and I've got to do this on the side. And I was, and then every medical professional who followed me was like, that is absolutely foul. If I mean, if they are a nurse, that the fact that they're wearing that outside. Wow. Yeah. That's so bizarre. I know. Man, that's bizarre. Oh man! A lot of this is bizarre, guys. But what I will, you know, the, what I'll give to Dor when I did DoorDash, you also meet the people who get delivery are some of the. I mean, I get delivery all the time, but you you have to meet some of the weirdest people. Oh, dude, that are I, so hard to work with. I never work for Postmates or Uber, but I delivered Jimmy John's on a bicycle. It's the same. That's even worse. At night. Terrible. Literally in a military town where everyone's just horny dudes. I've literally like delivered a sub. And uh, the sub, like all the subs together were like 20 bucks and the guy gave me 13 and he told me to keep the change and he closed the door and I went back to the restaurant and my manager was like, why didn't you get the rest of the money? Why didn't I go up against four, um, four people in the Navy who are dudes? on my bike insane. at night for seven dollars <laughs> insane i mean literally i had one time a guy who opened the door i delivered a doordash a doordash order that was so much I, it was like a really big order so um first of all five dollars is not a good tip anyway yeah. for what it was but he handed me five dollars as if he was handing me um a million yeah. and winked at me and said buy yourself something nice i was like what am i in i love lucy why are you talking to me like that yeah. what is like what's happening He's like, buy yourself something nice. I look at it. It's an Australian dollar. Oh, God. Like, money from... I'm like, I can't use this. I'm not going to go to fucking get this exchange for yeah. a dollar yeah. or five dollars or whatever it was. I was like, what the hell? And that was at least a tip. A lot of people just don't tip. Yeah. Or, don't, or they'll tip and then they take it. I'm like, how rude do you have to be? Yeah. The worst was when I did DoorDash in my hometown, which is, like, rural. Yeah. I think there's pros and cons because, like, there was always parking, which I see L.A. delivery drivers yeah. deal with. But there was... So there was always parking... But you you would say, so when you get a DoorDash driver, it says like one mile away or point, point 0.6 miles away. <clears throat> so sometimes I would take like a two mile away order. I'd be like, oh, that's great. Yeah. But then it would be like, I wouldn't realize it was like point 0.6 miles to a dirt road. Oh, and then yeah. two miles of a dirt road in pitch black dark where your GPS yeah. doesn't work and you have no service. And a person's trying to get like a fucking six pack of beer delivered. Yeah. And you get there and they're like, and I was in a Prius too, yeah. which is not four wheel drive. It's not off road. I'm going in potholes. I'm push. I, I would in no service. Yeah. Pitch black dark. It was I sometimes run out of gas. It was terrible. And then they would give you like a dollar. And I was like, I can't, I can't. <laughs> I got really mad at a guy one time because he was on a road that was unusable. Clearly he had a fucking monster truck yeah. in his garage. I don't know. But he was like potholes that were like, you could hardly call a pothole. They were just holes. They were yeah. huge. They were massive. My car could not make it up. It got stuck multiple times. It, it was so, and then I get there, there's a gate. Yeah. I'm like, well, you should have told me that. What, the, what am I supposed to do? He's not answering his phone. I'm like, I need the gate code. I'm standing out there. And finally, I just had to like walk around the tree and walk up to his house. And he's like, hey, what? And I'm like, did you order food? And he's like, oh, yeah. And yeah. I was like, this was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you make me do this? My car is like, fu- where's my car's fucked up? And it's so dark and I'm so scared. People are so dumb. Wait, dude. Oh, my God. I That reminds me. My brother used to deliver pizzas. And this is like in 2010, 11. And like this was like the gas in Northern Virginia was like six bucks, and he was like a high schooler. Yeah. And all the tips he got, he would spend on gas for his car. Yeah. Because the pizza place wouldn't reimburse this him. Terrible. So he's losing money at this pizza job. Oh my god! Yeah, that was why I had a hard time with DoorDash because you can like write you yeah. can like write your gas off on your taxes, but it does not feel as satisfying as mm-hmm. like. Uh, and I had a Prius, so that was fine. Yeah. But I know some people are. I'll see when I get my DoorDash deliveries, like they're driving a, you know a fucking Range Rover or whatever. And yeah. And I'm like... They've got a Hummer. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like they, I've seen them drive cars where I'm like, you're not making money here. Yeah. What? you got to figure something else out. Yeah. Run like a fancy... Do like Uber uh, luxury. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or whatever. Um. Anyways. Yeah. I had a lot of fun this episode. I did too. Yeah. I actually love... We should do it. We could do another one of these. If you guys want more legal advice, the legal advice is like, person is missing. Uh... <laughs> Uh, call nine one one. 
um, you are hallucinating. <laughs> Legally, you're hallucinating. That's really sad because yeah. I do feel like that's probably what's happening. I remember that we had like a thing in my hometown that was like a, you know, this Facebook page that would post kind of the most nuts yeah. police reports that are like, a raccoon is wearing a tutu outside my house, like crazy yeah. things. And there's a, there was always ones that where you were just like, it, and then the police came and none of this was happening. And oh, yeah. it's like so sad. I'm like, that is just such a hell to live in where you think that, mm-hmm. that stuff's happening. No, yeah, like um, the hallucinating one. Uh, I My ex lived in Glendale and there was this plastic fire. And I was like, I'm fine. I'm fi- I walked outside, couldn't see. Like, I mean, like my vision went completely black. Yeah. And I'm and it took me like a couple seconds to register that breathing in plastic yeah. will do that to you. Yeah. And have I walk <laughs> Yeah, wow. I, I was I was fine. But like I was like if I mean, have you ever been like you ever been around a carbon monoxide leak? Um <gasps> I've gotten car- I've gotten carbon monoxide poisoning in my eyes. Oh my god! When my dad would go to work, he'd put me in the car for eight hours, and I remember there was this one small garage that he left the car <laughs> running because it got hot and the back windows were cracked, and I literally was vomiting because I had so much carbon monoxide. Like it was all like in my face. Oh. My and then I was like, god. "This makes sense how people die this way." Yeah. And, oh yeah. <laughs> So many, so many things to unpack in that story. Yeah, um, but, but it's, uh, yeah, because he had to work and he couldn't oh, find a sitter. Okay, where was your mom working? Deployed. Okay, and Jake and Hannah went to church camp, and you, I stayed home because I said no way, Jose. And then I got carbon oh, monoxide poisoning because my dad locked me in the car. Well, he didn't lock me in. I could get out and I'd walk around the top of the parking deck, um, for a couple hours. What would you do? Walk. Anything fun? No, but I mean, would you? bring a book or yeah I, I read like the aragon series <laughs> harry potter twilight oh i had go. i read all those there and i go. remembered it was a uh, red mazda mpvlx uh they moved the two middle seats out so it was just a bench seat in the back and then all like those little divots from the two seats they removed and i would just sleep in so it so they set it up for you <laughs> yeah i would put down a big of the year. blanket and i sweat through it that is just the worst you didn't keep the ac on huh well no because sometimes the car would die well, there you have it. Um, I think you should post that on the the legal thread. <laughs> See there, what you can get from that. Is there a statute of limitations on not babysitting your kids? Abandonment? Um, yeah, it's not called not babysitting. That you, <laughs> you neglect is what yeah. it would be called. You're not in charge of babysitting them. Oh, yes. Yeah, so I've gotten carbon monoxide poisoning a couple times. Okay. Well, I mean, well I- I'm sure you could. I wonder if you could sue, if you ended up having medical issues because of that in the future, if you could sue your parents for medical stuff. The thing is, is there's already so much damage from cigarette smoke. You know, yeah. it's like trying to get and reimbursed there, for like a scratch yeah. on your car when it's totaled. And there might be no proof, I guess, too. Yeah. Well, so I mean, hard. yeah. I mean, besides the... I don't want to say where I used to work. There was like a lot of cameras. But okay, yeah. And I mean, have you hallucinated? Yes. <laughs> have you ever hallucinated? I have this one memory. Uh-huh. I remember it so I don't remember a lot from my childhood, but I remember this one moment I was walking my dog. Or I was on my bike or something. I was outside. And a you know those like crayon costumes from like Party City? Yeah. I was like a hundred yards away and I saw two people like a hundred yards away wearing those costumes walking. Yeah. And I remember being like, that's really weird. I wonder if there's like a Halloween party happening, but it wasn't near Halloween. It yeah. was like, it wouldn't make sense. I was like, why were they doing that? And then I was like, maybe it's just like kids having fun. I don't know, but they were far away. I turned really fast like to look at something. I turned back, they weren't there. Yeah. And that same day there was a woman, cause I would ride my bike for like a long time. Like yeah. I love like hours. Um, and there was a woman walking up the street and it was pretty vacant street. I didn't live in a city. Yeah. She's like walking up the street and she was like yammering. Like I was like, Oh, is she drunk? Like yeah. she seems drunk. And it was, this, it was the same day. And I like, she was behind me and I was riding my bike. And then when I turned back, she wasn't there. And I literally went home and said to my mom, I was like, I'm worried I was hallucinating. Yeah. And that was the only time I don't think I probably was, but it was weird. And I still think about it where I'm like, what yeah. was going on? And why, uh, what, why, where were those people? I don't know. No. Yeah. They but, seemed so real though. Yeah. Like, but then I was like, it, it, it felt so real, but then I couldn't find them. And then I felt like both of those scenarios were weird in themselves. So I was like, maybe that wasn't real because like, it doesn't really make sense. Like yeah. I live in a pretty like, an area where like there's not a lot of people, very vacant. There's not a lot of children. It's like yeah. a lot of like older people live there. Neither, neither seen. I've never seen either of these people. Well, the people in the crayon outfits, I couldn't like make their face. But like this woman, I was like, I've never yeah. seen her in my life. 
there's not often like drunk people walking around. I mean, it was yeah. just like weird, two very weird scenarios in the course of a couple hours. And I was like, whoa, that was weird. Dude, I want to have a glitch in the Matrix episode now. <gasps> Let's do it. I've had a glitch in the Matrix. It's pretty boring now. I was, um, I was walking up a flight. I walked up four flights of stairs because at my old apartment, the elevator was broken and it was like concrete steps. I, I, I walked up four flights of stairs. I put, I was fully sober, broad daylight, 23. I'm not, I've never hallucinated besides from carbon monoxide at that point <laughs> in my life. And I put my key in the door and I'm immediately back at the bottom of the <gasps> stairs. Like I'm just at the bottom of the stairs. And I, it's not like I was tired. Like it was like, I mean, I, I was in shape, like great shape, but like I literally, I literally like nearly shit myself because it was like one second I put my key in the door and then I was at the bottom of this and nothing else happened. I just walked back up the stairs. That makes me want to throw up. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? And then that people, is really scary. Wow. That's wild. Wait, I'm actually going to write down glitch in the matrix. Like, but it's, I mean, the cool glitch in the matrix stories are like. I literally disappeared for like 24 hours and no one had noticed. But I'm like, I walk some stairs and then I set the ball. That's wild, though. <laughs> I wonder, could you look at security camera footage? Probably. Whoa. <laughs> Sarah Shower edited BCC Club talk. Topics. I'm adding it now. But I think that's enough legal advice today yeah. and the ramblings of two people, one person <laughs> who's. God, carbon mics. I've also lit the wrong end of cigarettes and inhaled that plastic. Yeah. Ooh, that burns. Ooh, I have been in a fire. Yeah. I almost oh my I God. almost died in a fire. Have I told you about that? Why haven't you told me that? I don't know. I did. I was on the top floor of my dorms that bur- it burned and I was like on the I had a this is the last story also, but I was I was in a really I was in a relationship that was very eighteen. Like yeah. we were eighteen, you know, so it was like not it was like toxic in a very like normal eighteen year old way where yeah. we were and my friends were like, They're not good to you and I was like, ah, I love them. Yeah. And so I wouldn't want to talk I had roommates, they were my friends, and I wouldn't want to talk on the phone to my girlfriend in my room because they'd be like, Don't you should be talking to her. She's yeah. bad. So I would go up to the laundry room, which was on the top floor, and I think it was thirteen floors. Yeah, it would be thirteen floors. And I um so I went up there to talk to them, and I was wearing nothing. It was it was winter in New York. I was wearing a robe. I was yeah. wearing something, but I okay. was like wearing nothing under yeah. my robe, and I was wearing like socks. And I'm talking to them on the phone, and I hear like sirens. But we're in New York, like we're in the middle of New York City. Yeah. Like I didn't think about it. And then I would heard people screaming and like running down the stairs. But like it wasn't that intense, and it was just like thudding. But I lived in a dorm, so yeah. I was like, oh my god, like these. And I'm not putting anything together. And there's no alarm yeah. at all. No alarm went off. And all of a sudden, I am I'm fully engulfed in smoke. Like, cannot see anything. Like, it is just, like, white, like, engulfed in smoke. And I literally remember being like, I'm going to die. Because I was like, I now, if I'm logically thinking about it, I'm like, well, smoke rises. So, obviously, yeah. it's good. But in my head, I'm like, the whole thing besides where I'm at is fully on fl- in flames. Yeah. So, I just started, like, sprinting. I remember just faster than I've ever sprinted. Like I've never, I don't know how I ran downstairs so fast. I was yeah. just like going and I ran through it, like literally through the fire. Like yeah. not, it didn't touch me, but it was in like, the, there's a staircase and then the floor yeah. was like in flames and two floors burned down and I was the last person to leave the building. And then it was snowing outside and I almost, I have Renauds, which is like a part of lupus. So you're not supposed to get cold. And they had to thaw me out in a bathtub after oh my god it was a whole thing and now i really do get like if i smell smoke i, I get a little like ah! oh wow really scary i guess i didn't almost die but i think no, dude, it was like I terrifying because i didn't oh, i guess it's like i didn't almost die but i really thought i was about to die yeah and if i'd waited any longer i think it would have been a bad situation because i there was so i can't even explain how heavy the smoke was yeah because i think in my head i'm like well i didn't almost die because like it, the the fire never ended up getting to the 13th floor. So even if I'd stayed at the 13th floor, it wouldn't have been the end of the world. But I think it's like, well, actually, I probably would have died from, like, smoke inhalation. Yeah. Crazy. It was scary. Dude, I'm so happy you're alive. Thank okay. you. Thank you, me too. Because I don't know what I would do legally. Actually, if you never, if you didn't, that was, that would be, that's a sad thought. You never existed to me. I know. You would exist, but I mean, Not I would have never. You. you would never have known me. It's it wasn't like, even viral yet. So I was basically worthless I'm do you do you ever think about that like all there's all the cool people you could have met oh that died yeah yeah like it's wild like even you, just down to like yeah like babies i yeah. guess or like people who like 
switched schools, uh-huh. like almost went to your school but didn't. Yeah. I was thinking about that because when we moved to California from North Carolina, they like obviously were like picking between three different schools. And I almost went to this other school and I'm always just like, whoa, my life would be probably so different if I went to that school instead of my school. Dude, I have to watch the butterfly effect now. It's have wild. you seen that movie? Yeah, I saw it so long ago though yeah. I hardly remember it. But well, all right, we've just we've talked your ear off, but mm-hmm. thank you so much for being here. We're actually talking today. To, to someone who uh, gives legal advice on the internet. legal advice. And that's all we're going to say about that. Because mm-hmm. you're going to see it's going to be wild. It's going to be great. And happy Wednesday. Let's get to our interview. Hello, everyone. We are back. And we are about to interview someone who knows a lot about internet legal advice. I assume you want to introduce yourself? My name is Anthony Crumbus of Crumbus Cousin and Law. Oh, wow. Okay, mm. are you a real lawyer? I'm a lawyer by defined as I went to a bar and I passed my SAT there, so I passed the bar exam. You went to a bar? Yeah. Why did they, how did they even let you take your SATs at a bar? That's not how that works. Well, I was, I had the computer open and I was taking my SAT online and they let me take there. So now I've got a bar exam. Okay, all right. And I'm sorry, I have to ask. Your hat says, don't touch. Yeah. 1-800-YOU-WISH. Mm-hmm. Do you want to talk about your hat a little? <laughs> That's my li- my law office motto. <laughs> don't touch. Be quiet. All right. You wish. How did you become a moderator for r slash legal advice? Well, there was uh, an older gentleman who was drinking at the bar, and he said to me, do you ever feel like yelling at people online? And I said, yes, I do. Yes, I do, yeah. And so he said, do you have any, uh, do you have any experience with the legal system? And I said, I've been arrested no less than 30 times. Wow. So, you know, for misdemeanors, felonies, I met misdemeanor, uh, you know. Yeah. So I, 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 I know a lot so about the law. you learn fully from experience. Yes. Well, yes. it seems like maybe you don't give good legal advice because you've been arrested so many times. No, I know how to deal with each I know how to deal with jaywalking to you know uh, yeah, reckless abandonment oh, wow. you know to, to hot why in a car so I know how to get you out of the system pretty quick sure, yeah sure yeah. yeah yeah so what if you were to give me one piece of legal advice what would it be shut the hell up all right actually I think that's pretty good legal yeah advice. don't you make your biggest I I made my first biggest 20 mistakes when I kept talking, you know? What, what, was, the, what was the case? What did you do wrong? I had just stolen a car. You and what did you say to the cops? And I said, this is not my car, <laughs> but if it was, I'd pay, I'd pay for it every month. And so I was trying to establish that I'm a reliable car owner. Yeah. You know, when I stole it, I got the oil changed. That's nice. That's real nice, you know? So now when they return it, to, to Mr. Di DiBaggio. Yeah. He's going to have a nice oil in his car. You yeah, know? yeah. Wow. I yeah. mean, that's incredible. I mean, that's nice. I know. You didn't have to do that. Yeah, and I vacuumed out the trunk. Just the trunk. Yeah, just the trunk. Because, I mean, I... Was there a dead body in it? No. Why'd you clean the trunk, only the trunk? You don't clean a, a trunk to put a body in it. That's like, you know, <laughs> that's like, that's like you know, vacuuming before you've wiped the counter. You know, you wipe the counter off first so you get the crumbs sure. on the floor, you know? Yeah, that's true. You we put a, a dead body in a clean trunk. Are you a good husband? I feel like you clean up a lot. I've been married. You've been... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Someone's cooked here. I've been divorced, remarried, divorced, married again. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay, so what, like, give me an example on r slash legal advice. What's a piece of advice you've given that you've really helped with the situation? Okay, so one of my clients, quote unquote, was going 145 in a school zone. Whoa! Yeah. He had to go to the bathroom. So uh, he gets pulled over. Cop says, what are you doing? You're going to jail. Right. And so my client, he remembered my legal advice previously from the 15 counts of jaywalking. Oh, Mm -hmm. yeah. I told him to shut up. And so I get get to the courtroom. And so um, we're, we're doing this trial. And the judge is like, you know, uh, why were you going? You really had to use the bathroom. So I made sure my client, before the court date, loaded up on on, on seafood yeah. and pasta and a bunch of Taco Bell. And I made him ask the judge multiple times, can I go to the bathroom? And oh. the judge always said no. And so eventually I said, when the judge says no a fourth time, shit your pants. So he shits his pants in the courtroom. And I said, I submit this in the evidence. He shit his pants, just like he did that day. And did he, he win? Went. He did not. <laughs> but we got him. Only, we got him 15 years 
had to plead an insanity. Wow. Yep. Poor guy. I know. And this was videotaped? I can watch this on YouTube? Uh, no, but uh, the the courtroom artist drew, it was a cartoonist who had the day off. And yeah. so it, we, you can see the entire trial, you know, frame by frame by frame. So, And did you, uh, have you ever met someone in person you've given advice to on r slash legal advice? Yeah, that guy I gave, um, you know, I was his uh, legal representation. But that was, you know, he was just, he, he was a local guy, you know. Wow. But I mean, I have, I have represented several people in court to their chagrin. Yeah. But I've been there. I'm shut. So you don't have you because we got to be real about this. You're not really a. Uh, you took a fake bar exam. I'm not a public defender, but I am a public offender. <laughs> so You're a criminal. I'm a PO. <laughs> you know, and so when I say I'm, you know, what was my name? <laughs> Anthony. I think. Anthony PO. They think police <laughs> officer. I said no. I'm a public offender. I am someone who gets removed from court often, yeah. who causes a mistrial, and that's how we win. Yeah. Yes. And how many times have you won? I'd say, you know, over, under, seven. Over, under, what? <laughs> over, <laughs> yeah. under, so none? What yeah, is- I mean, I've been, in, uh, I've been in several courtrooms, and I've won seven times. All right. Yeah. What would you say, before you go, mm-hmm. to people who are commenting on our slash legal advice? If you're not a good actor, and you're going to plead insanity... Make sure you take a couple mushrooms before you get tested. So they would test you for drugs, I think. Uh, psilocybin, I think, is not on the list. <laughs> Shrooms is fine in yeah. the court of law. You know, it, you just uh, mine, microdose everything and see where that takes you. I think that's good advice. Yeah, if you haven't taken an acting course, do drugs right mm-hmm. before. Or blood thinners. That'll make you weird. <laughs> <laughs> You're on a lot of blood thinners, aren't you? Oh, I cannot stand up. <laughs> yeah, we'll carry you out. We got to carry you out. Well, thank you so much for being here and taking your time away from me. I know you got a busy schedule. Oh, yeah, I do. I got uh, I got a couple people who are commenting, yeah. you know, what do I do if I throw up on a police horse? Okay, see, in that, in that scenario, this yeah. guy was on a zip line going over the Vegas Strip, and he's wasted. He throws up, and it, the cop looks up, vomit lands on him. So oh. I advised him allegedly to, you know, maybe feed the horses in the stable something weird every week. So when they get called to trial, you know, the horses are consistently throwing up, so the cop now believes the horse threw up on him. So why are the horses in the sky? What? The horses were in the sky? No, the guy was on a zip line, threw up right. on, the, on the zip line that fell on a police horse. I see. Yeah. And that's illegal? To throw up, it's assaulting an officer. To throw up on one? A hooved officer. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, that's mm-hmm. good advice. Yeah. I'm going to call you. Please Thank you so do. much for being here. Do you have my number? No. I'll find it, though. I work for 911. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that a pickup line? <laughs> uh, I've gotten a lot of my worst dates working for 911. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, thank you for being here, and I just hope you have a splendid day, and... and We'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk to you more in the future. I hope you get arrested soon. Thank you. I'll see you then. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Well, guys, was that fun? It was a delight. Okay. It was a delight. Um, it was very fun. It was wild. It was a good time. I wish you could have been here. I wish I was here, too, but I legally couldn't say what I did while yeah. I was gone. But thank you guys so much for listening. This is a bit of a longer episode, but we have new episodes every Wednesday. Make sure to like and subscribe on YouTube. What else should they do? You can write and review. Write and review. Um, Five stars. On anywhere you get your podcast. Five stars or nothing. Mm-hmm. Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Yeah. And share with your friends. Happy Wednesday. I hope you have a great week. I hope you're doing so great. Happy Wednesday. I've said happy Wednesday like six times, but it feels yeah. like, it feels like it's a happy Wednesday. Let us know if you're in any sort of legal trouble in the comments below. And we'll fix it. Yes. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.